you go. Well, good day. I'm looking forward to talking to you about some stress management techniques and, and also about the Woodbees, which is a book that uh, my daughter and a great artist uh, helped put together, and uh, it's called The Woodbees, and it tells an important story, a lesson, about how it's important to be the best you can be and uh, not get lost in all the chatter of the should-bees, the ought-to-bees, and the want-to-bees. So first, who am I, and why am I been given this opportunity to talk to you? Well, I've been an attorney for 43 years, trial attorney, real estate attorney. I competed in college and nationally in tennis. I have seven national titles, and I played against some of the best players in the United States and the world, and that was stressful, and I had to develop techniques to overcome that stress or turn it to my advantage. And we'll get to those techniques in a little bit. Um, well, who else am I? Uh, well, I'm a husband, 35 years. We have seven children, and really, I won't tell you how many grandchildren now, but raising the seven children, teaching them the importance of values, understanding who they are, being themselves, and not worrying about trying to be something more. They could improve, but that was their path. And by improving, they became better at being themselves. And there is rewards in, in, in being better. So what is my goal today in, in, in sharing with you some of these ideas, stress management techniques, is because we can't escape the stress in, in our lives. We can't escape the chatter of the should-bees, the odd-bees, and the wannabes. Those, those don't go away, but we can learn to use the stress of situations as motivators and rethink stress as a motivator. I'm going to give you a phrase. I, um, it's an important one, and I, I would refer to it and, and think about it in points of my engagement with the stress, that at the point of greatest risk is opportunity. If you prepare yourself, if you have the tools and techniques, you can embrace that moment of stress. I mean, you can't escape it. I mean, you could be on the sideline or you can decide, coach, put me in. I'm ready. And to be ready means that you have a foundation to weather the storm of controversy and uh, adversarial confrontation. And I, I'm gonna say that the foundation is to have in mind not just who you are and who you wanna be, but the ethics and the principles and the core values that you adhere to because that helps you define yourself and see yourself and be a good person. I'm going to talk to you then about the ABCs of performance. A being for attitude, B is best efforts, and C is for consistency. Attitude is not just what you think, but what you develop and how you project yourself. But you gotta know how to see who you are. So building and uh, protecting yourself and your self-esteem. How do you start? Well, you start with affirmations. What does that mean? Well, what does it mean to me? Because that's what I want you to consider. Affirmations are positive words that in, in, encourage you, that define who you not only want to be, but who you are. You're positive. You're focused. You can. I'm going to give you another phrase on the can part. Henry Ford's quote is, if you think you can and think you can't, you're probably right. Very true. In whatever endeavor you're in, if doubt is in front of you, then it's a roadblock. If confidence, preparation, and commitment to being better, your performance is better. And that may achieve the success you want. And if it doesn't, you're one step further down the path of developing the techniques you need. All right, let's talk about techniques because it's easy to say, you know, be positive and 
you know, uh, project an image, but what is that? Well, first of all, the affirmations should be reviewed and, 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 and considered, I'm gonna say every day. I wrote down seven words that were important to me before competition, before going to court. Positive, focused, I can. I also added, I am a warrior, because it seemed like being a warrior was important. Actually, it was. Those are examples. And then, what I would do is use the technique of meditation and self-hypnosis. Uh, in, in competition, and even before going to court, I would visualize where I was, what I was going to do, how I was going to present. I would get down to the details of what I was going to wear. And then I would prepare, whether it be my brief uh, case and, and the briefs I was saying in the court or it was my tennis racket bag. Did I have my things together? And then what was I going to wear? I, I made sure I was ready to project the image that I wanted to project and that I believed I was doing. You know, there's a, a good concept. See it, believe it, do it. If you see it in your mind and if you believe it, you know, that's a strong positive force. Then you begin to do it. And that doesn't mean on the day up. That means that you prepare the consistency, the ABCs of performance. So what do you do? Well, you transform the stress in your mind. The mindset of stress should be, in my mind, a mindset that it is a motivator. Uh, there are stress times when it's not that easy. I know that. But I know that if I had a mindset that this was a challenge and I had prepared, and when I say prepared, I talked about law and I talked about um, my competition. How about preparing to deal with whether it's spouse, partner, children, Learning to communicate and listen is important. And I had to view what I was going to do and how I was going to present an opportunity to improve. So the benefit of stress is only there if you have a mindset that you can use it. For me, the stress of challenge and then motivating me took away the uncertainty because I knew what I was going to do. And I, I, I followed that course. All right, now let me talk up just briefly about the would-bees. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the cover of the book. Um, and the art is great, and as I hold it up, I see that it reverses the, the would-bees. Well, the would-bees is the would-bees. And it's a fable with these two bunnies and they were actually my children, um, Hannah Bunny and Billy Bunny. They're in their 30s. They were five and seven when I wrote this. And thanks to my daughter, Meta Croc, and, and the great artists, the nationally recognized artists, Aaron Kessler, the story came to life. What's the story? Well, the bunnies are there in their home and they're happy and they decide to go into the forest for a, a treasure hunt. And the forest is beautiful, it's serene. You know, other animals are out there. Everyone seems to know their place and understand the peacefulness of their surroundings and to operate without confrontation or confusion. And as they're going looking for the treasures, uh, Billy Bunny is finding rocks. Hanny Bunny is looking for sticks, some flowers. There's a buzzing that comes out of the trees of the forest. Hanny wants to know what that is, and Billy tells her, Hanny, we have to run, run, it's the wood bees. And as they run, the bees come out of the forest, and they are chattering. You should do this. You ought to be this way. You can't to do that. You want to be this way. It was just too confusing. And they ran. And when they ran, they ran home, shut the door against all the buzzing and noise. And as they took time to catch their breath, oh, by the way, breathing is an important technique. Take a deep breath, relax, allow yourself to center. I was told once that the sigh is a point in time when 
the mind, spirit, and body come together because you let go of all the stress. So I think breathing is a good idea. All right, coming back to Billy and, and Hanny Bunny. They're in there, and Hanny looks at Billy and says, you know, Billy, I think the best kind of be is to be ourselves. And we can go out, but we don't have to listen to everything right away that makes us want to change. Let's go out and be ourselves, and then we can decide in our own time how we want to improve. And that's the end of the story as they go off on their adventure. So, the would-be's. It's my story of actually how I grew up and how I dealt with all the would-be's and how I raised my children to do that and how I've coached. I've coached to focus on my students' ability and then some points to improve. And when you take those points, that's a step forward to handling and managing the stress. There's another concept that's important is time management. And what I'll say to you is make your list, do it the night before, put on the list of the things that you have to do, because there are have tos, but don't put on the list what can be done to mo the next day. In other words, do what you have to do today and put off to tomorrow what can be done tomorrow. And that's a stress release, especially as students, professionals. Conclusions. Don't ignore the chatter, but don't give in to it. Create space and time for you to consider because that's the momentum control of this rush of opinions that can overwhelm you. Then decide what are your stress management techniques and implement them. Not once a week or once a month. I'm gonna suggest you need to build your image and practice how you wanna project daily. I'm going to go back to a quote I told you earlier, Henry Ford's quote. If you think you can or think you can't, you're probably right. So what do you do? You think that you can do something, and then you prepare yourself, and then you're consistent in how you approach. The ABC is a performance. Thank you and good luck in your development and your management of that awful concept of stress, which your mindset is going to tell you is a motivator. Thank you.